Hello everyone, welcome to Tech Football. My name is Joe, and uh, today I'm going to be going through all 21 editions of the World Cup so far in anticipation of um, Qatar 2022 coming up. Uh, and I'm going to be picking the best player from each winning team. Uh, I've chosen each winning team specifically because, of course, the Golden Ball already is a award given to the best player at the tournament. But I think this is a fun twist on it. Um, so I'm a bit of a historian when it comes to football, especially the World Cup. So let's get going. All the way back in 1930. I'm going to be honest, of course, for most of the World Cups, this is all going to be research because you know I've only been around for the last few, um, as a lot of people have. Um, but yeah, research and footage for kind of the later, but still um, older ones, if that makes any sense, um, will, will help me. So I've gone for 1930, I've gone for Jose Nasazzi, the uh, centre-back who captained his side to winning the first ever tournament in Uruguay and won by Uruguay. Now I've chosen him simply because he was the captain and um, you can look at the concession rate of Uruguay in the 1930 World Cup and it was pretty low, especially considering the number of goals that went in in that sort of time period. Uh, 1934 then, moving on, Italy won in Italy, and I'm going to go for Angelo Schiavia, simply because he was a great striker. I think he scored, was it six goals in that tournament? Not, don't quote me on that, I'm not sure. But uh, scored, of course, the winning goal in the final against Czechoslovakia. Um, moving on to 1938 though, when Italy won it again, I'm going to go for Giuseppe Miazza, who is widely regarded as one of the greatest Italian footballers of all time and I think that um, in the 1930s of course helped Italy win both 34 and 38 consecutively uh, but I think that was more prominent in 38 when perhaps the quality of, um, of the Italian team had dropped off a little bit but still he was there and well enough to win Italy their second title. Right 1950 then, getting quite fast through this, uh, 1950 uh, was after a 12 year break because of 42 and 46, there was no World Cups because of World War Two and the uh, after effects of that. So 1950, uh, Uruguay won again, this time in Brazil. And I'm going to go for Alcides Gigia, the striker who won it for Uruguay in the decisive match against Brazil. Of course, the format was a little bit different back then, so there was no definitive final in the 1950 uh, tournament. But that, that game between Uruguay and Brazil kind of was the decisive game. And he scored the goal, which made Uruguay uh, win the tournament as opposed to Brazil. Uh, four years later then, 1954, and Germany, well specifically West Germany, won their first um, uh, World Cup, and uh, they beat Hungary, who were absolutely magnificent at the time, 3-2 in the final, and that was uh, mainly due to Helmut Braun, who scored not only the equaliser, but also the winner as well. And it was you know, a complete shock result, considering Hungary were expected to win, having beaten Germany 8-3 earlier on in that tournament. But Germany won and the rest is history. 1958 then, this is when things start to get more interesting because of course a lot more footage coming about, uh, the tournament progressing, more, more people are interested and TVs are coming about as well, it's not all radio anymore. And Pele was at the heart of the 1958 World Cup winning um, Brazil their first star. Uh, he was only 17 years old at the time, scored two goals in the final, I believe a hat-trick in the semi-final and to do that at such a young age is of course commendable and uh, incredible. Four years later then, Brazil became the second team to successfully defend their World Cup title, but this time I'm not going to choose Pelé because he was absent for quite a few games. In fact, I'm going to go for Garincha. Garincha is uh, perhaps best well known for the World Cup in Chile in 1962 and um, made it possible for Brazil to defend their title by decimating many teams, England being one of them along the way, and of course against Czechoslovakia in the final. 1966, England. This is uh, where it's at, really, isn't it? Lots and lots of choices here and there. I'm actually going for Bobby, uh, Bobby Charlton, though. one of the uh, Charlton brothers. Uh, he was a very, very important player for the uh, England team, not only scoring goals, but also linking the midfield of like Moore and Styles uh, to, of course, the attacking line of Roger Hunt, Jeff Hurst, etc. Et um, and out of that England team, which had such talent, Involved in it, I think that Charlton was the main player. 1970, Brazil won their third title. Um, and for many people, they would say Pele. But I'm going to be a little bit different because I've already said in Watson this list. I'm going to say Jozinho. Um, Jozinho was, of course, a renowned striker and winger, as small as he was. Um, very, very clinical goal scorer and good for assists. And I think that he was a very, very important part of the um, Brazilian squad that won the 1970 World Cup. Pelé, you could argue, 
what's the most important, but having had him already watching this list, I think Jorginho de definitely deserves the, um, the, the shout out for that. 1974 then was the first tournament with the, the trophy we know today, um, having replaced the uh, Jules Romain. And it was Germany that won it, and they had a wealth of talent in 1974 with Seth Meyer in goal, Beckenbauer at the back, Gerd Müller up front, uh, Paul Breitner in midfield. They, they were absolutely stacked. But I am going to go for Franz Beckenbauer as the uh, most vital player of that, of that winning team. Um, the concession rate of the Germans was considerably low. It was on home soil, so uh, that's probably an advantage. But considering they're up against the uh, Dutch total football with, you know, talents like Cruyff and Naiskins, you've got to really give them credit. And Beckenbauer was earning his reputation as one of the greatest um, centre-halves of all time. So, yeah, credit to him there. 1978, Argentina, new winners. A um, few choices here and there, including those two which went to Tottenham Hotspur. Um, after the World Cup ended, Ozzy Ardiles and Ricky Villa. But for me, uh, the credit has to go to Mario Kempes. Can't actually remember where he played at club level, but um, in the final scores, two goals against the Netherlands once again, as well as many others throughout the tournament. So um, Argentina, of course, winning their first title. The names in there, probably not as well known as um, who I'm going to pick for 1986, but we'll come to that later. 1982, it was Italy that won with talents all around, Bruno Conti on the wing and uh, Marco Tardelli, of course. But I'm going to go for Paolo Rossi, who uh, was a clinical striker at the time. And again, widely regarded as one of the uh, greatest Italian strikers of all time. Um, and I think that he really did make it possible for Italy to win their third title in 1982. 1986 then is going to be Diego Maradona for Argentina. <sighs> Do I even need to explain? Probably not, scored the goal of the century, of course, against England, as well as that controversial hand of God goal and um, assists and goals all round, and his reputation is one of the greatest players that's ever played the game. 1990, Germany, again, many, many options as they won their third uh, title, and their last one is West Germany specifically. Um, but I'm going to go for Lothar Matthias, who was their uh, defensive midfielder, really linked up that, that back line with the attack and uh, a vital player for the Germans. 1994, I'm going to go for Romario. Um, it's a little bit difficult to credit a striker for Brazil in 1994, considering um, there were no goals in the final and they won it by a penalty shootout. But Romario was a very, very impressive um, Brazilian talent, kind of the first thing since Gerd Müller of that stature yet being such an incredible prolific goal scorer and I think full credit goes to him for that. 1998 um, France were the new winners, the first star was added to their crest and I think Zinedine Zidane was at, right at the heart of the midfield and the French team which triumphed on home soil beating Brazil 3-0 in the final and Zidane scored two of them displaying his talent at the top level. 2002 is the first World Cup of the 21st century uh, and Brazil won their most recent uh, title in that year, uh, in the first ever Asian World Cup, co-hosted between South Korea and Japan. Lots and lots of talents in that Brazilian team in 2002, Ronaldinho, Cafu, Roberto Carlos, I believe, is still kicking about. But it's going to be R9, Ronaldo for me. Uh, scored eight goals in the tournament and is today the second top goal scorer in the tournament's history. An incredible player, incredible talent. Um, and we've never really seen a goal scorer like that. And I think that it was really at the heart of the Brazilian team in 2002. All right, 06 then, um, everyone remembers the losers, France, but it was Italy that won it on penalties. Uh, the most recent penalty win and most recent Italian title as well in 2006. I'm actually gonna credit the keeper for the first time in this video. I'm gonna go for Gianluigi Buffon. I personally believe he's the greatest goalkeeper of all time, just above the likes of Yashin and Zoff, in my opinion. Uh, and Casillas, but Buffon for me uh, really made Italy all the way to the end, uh, won it for them, uh, of course that penalty shootout being very very important from a goalkeeper perspective and also the fact that rarely goals were conceded for Italy in 2006, uh, that could partly be due to uh, having Cannavaro at the back as well, but uh, I'm going to credit Buffon there. 2010 Spain win in South Africa for the uh, first time Spain won and in their first final. I'm going for Andre Iniesta. He linked up the defence and attack very well in a team which was sported with talent. Um, 
you know, you've got so many great options in the back, in goal and up front, but Iniesta really was that link. Uh, 2014 Brazil, uh, Germany won it, their most recent World Cup win was in 2014, just uh, two World Cups ago. And I'm going to go for Thomas Muller for this one. Great, unique midfielder who uh, kind of transformed uh, Germany's kind of bad luck patch that they'd had in the previous World Cups of uh, getting far but not not quite far enough. And he'd actually kind of contributed to, to winning the tournament as much as the whole team did. Um, scored five goals, matching his tally in South Africa four years before. Uh, he's at 10 now, so that's going to be interesting if he can actually score any more in, in 2022. But yeah, for me, Muller was the most important piece of the jigsaw of winning Germany their World Cup in 2014. Finally, 2018, France were the uh, victors in Russia. And from my opinion, I believe that the midfield was really the heart of that World Cup win. I'd love to give credit to Hugo Lloris, but I don't think I can, considering he's a crime in the final against Croatia. Mbappe, of course, wonderful um, talent for his age. Griezmann played a major role, but for me, it's going to be N'Golo Kante who's going to get the, uh, the credit for creating all those chances and goals, uh, which helped France to win the title. So that'll do. Uh, that's good on time, actually. It's very good on time. Thank you for watching, and uh, subscribe for more videos.